Welcome to weird. the Daft Hour. Yes, it was weird, wasn't it? Like it's like yeah, we've actually we're, we're trying to press buttons live. Although Technology. that's probably going to be the only one for this show. But <laughs> as we've been promising for twelve shows now, we will get some new items done at some point. Um, yeah, we'll work that out. Maybe. We need to try and get a regular schedule of recording done first. I know. <laughs> well, welcome to show twelve of the Daft Hour with me, the artist formerly known as. And I'm Morgan Fantastic, as if we're on show 12, and we've only been doing the podcast for like over a year now. Yeah, I mean, regular, one a month then, if we look at it that way. One a month, that's not too bad. The professionals probably do that. They don't, do they? No. They, they get do. money for it as well, don't they? Yes, yes, which is always <laughs> beneficial, of course. Uh, we don't get paid a penny. I don't even think anyone listens, but hey ho! <laughs> <laughs> if you listen, please let us know, and we'll let you know how to let yeah. us know with some social let- media contact later. Later in the show, that's a little. T- it's a little hook, line, and sinker that to get them it is. to listen to the rest of the show. I know one listener for sure. My Who? sister. Ah, uh, oh, yes, yes, I do get a lot of um, notifications from your family in Canada. They're, they're, they're very much um, fans of the show, actually. Brilliant. They, in, they, they interact with the social media posts, which is nice. It is, look, so, on a, on a road trip that my mother and my sister went on, um, my sister played the shows, some of the shows for her. And well, my that must mother, have been a tedious ride. <laughs> yeah, my mother was, uh, it was shocked. I can't remember, I, I don't know if I've talked about this, but it was... It was when around when I was re- uh, moving house and I was going through all that uh, angry phase palaver. I've always got the angry phase. <laughs> all that palaver with the uh, fucking estate agent Julie. Oh yes, was was she a bit offended by your swearing? Yeah, well, my mother was absolutely shocked that I named Julie. Oh, I actually right. named the person. Julie. Oh, does she know who Julie is? She doesn't, but she was horrified for Julie in case Julie heard that I was bad mouthing Julie. Well, Julie shouldn't have been a bellend. <laughs> Julie the Bellend. It's a new I was going to say something worse, but now I'm aware that your mother listens. I don't want to use the bad words now because, like, give it ten minutes and you'll be saying bottom like a bad <laughs> mofo. Bottom's fine. It's I was going to call her the c word, but now I know mothers <laughs> are involved. <laughs> yeah, my mother's heard that word before. I'm sure she is because you were one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. So, how the devil have you been, and what have you been up to since oh. our last show? Our last show. So, when okay. was it? Uh, the last show recorded was with me and um, me. God Suki reference. Oh, oh, you did did a show, but I'm God's... not sure if I can find the recording, so that might be interesting. So, this might become. So, although this is show twelve. It show might be eleven. Thirteen. Yeah, I don't. No, no. It it might become show eleven. It depends oh right. If you can find show eleven. Okay. But yeah. Anyway, right. so what have you been up to since show <laughs> uh, ten? Uh, concept of times baffling me. It is. Um, when was the last show that I did? It was before Christmas, right? It was the sixth of uh, November. So it was 78, really? 78 days ago we recorded. Wow, in the past. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. so the last time I was on the podcast, I was just started rehearsals for the pantomime, and I was plugging the show. So unless you listen to that show <laughs> and, <laughs> and came to it, um, unfortunately, you've missed it now. But, um, yeah, I did, I did that. That took up, I'll be honest, artist. I'm going to have to get used to calling you that. Um, actually... <laughs> bollocks to it i'm calling you bambi um <laughs> yeah bambi i'll be honest it took up all my time it kind of consumed my life right um i was literally just waking up going to work rehearsing till about daft o'clock coming home and repeating that for about well two months really um and then the show itself we did 10 sh- 10 shows in a week okay um the la- it went great it went great um good Good audiences, pretty, sold out pretty much every night. Um, got the laughs, 
got got good feedback and stuff i really enjoyed it apart from um i didn't think i was gonna make the last show because i nearly passed out on stage in the matinee oh dear what from uh dehydration and exhaustion <laughs> oh dear um yeah so literally there's a, there was a scene where um i have a, a trolley and i um did pulled out records from a trolley it was like a like a little bit and uh, halfway through that, I started to go lightheaded. And literally, it was a good job I had the trolley because that kept me propped up. <laughs> and I felt felt myself going. That's why they're but, called props, aren't they? Yeah, well, now I know. Now I know. And uh, I got through the rest of the scene, got through the rest of the show, barely. Um, and was supplied about three big, massive, like, litre bottles of water in between to sort myself out. And... And I made the night performance, but at one point it was a bit touch and go. I thought I was, well, I'll be honest, it was a bit dramatic. Uh, I, <laughs> I, got, I was a goner. I thought I was a goner, but yeah. <laughs> well, that's it's not like you to be a bit dramatic, Morgan. It is it, it is it. The but problem I with thought, the, all that water I, you consumed in between. Yeah. I, did you have time to actually get on stage in between going to the loo? It was a bit of a nightmare as well because... Uh, the trousers I had on were very baggy, so I had to have braces on. So with the braces on, they were pulled up Simon Cowell style, like oh, right up my torso. Brilliant. So so to get it out, I had to like, <laughs> my penis, I had <laughs> to either take my full costume off or like kind of lower it like really badly with the, the elastic. Wow. And that caused me to piss myself a few times. <laughs> <laughs> It's all Which right. It's just a costume, wasn't it? Wasn't your own clothes? Yeah, I strongly recommended them to wash it afterwards because I was like, I'll be honest, guys. Like after that last performance, I definitely weed all over my trousers. <laughs> um, but you know, that's what you do for show business. The show must. That's show on. business. Yep. That's show go. business. Covered in piss and disappointment. But, well, um, that's what the kids expect at Christmas, isn't it? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Piss, piss on you. Piss. What was your character? <laughs> I played buttons. Pissy buttons. Pissy buttons. Pissing on the kids. <laughs> <laughs> all right, R. Kelly. <laughs> R. Kelly. She's all right, her, isn't she? Hey. Hey. Um, bit of a slag. But uh, anyway, yeah, that's what I was doing. And then it was Christmas, Bambi. It um, was, wasn't it? Did you have a nice Christmas? I, I had a Christmas, yeah. You had a Christmas? Yeah, okay, I had a Christmas. It. Um, and then New Year happened, so it, I've re I've made actually some New Year's resolutions. Have you? Yeah. To... yeah. Would you like to hear them? Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, is food not eating bad food one of them? Well, we'll see. Well, okay. We'll uh, see. <laughs> spoilers. <laughs> uh, so n qu number one, um, I'm going to continue to not go to the gym. Good man. Uh, number two, I'm going to push my new catchphrase, which is uh, that will be on your gravestone. Oh yes, we've we've used that one, haven't we? That'll be on your gravestone. Yeah, yes. yeah. So I'm going to continue to push that until it becomes a known commodity. Yep. Um, I'm going to write a children's book. Okay. I'll With the catchphrase in it. That's the title. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number four, I'm going to win the lottery. Right. Uh, and number five, I'm going to disturb the peace. <laughs> yes. Well, I th some of these are, uh, will be linked. I think uh, once you win the lottery. You'll disturb the peace and not care. I think that's quite a good one. Disturb the peace or a few priests? I wasn't sure what you said there. Dis disturb the priest. Yeah, I reckon you could do that as well. I could disturb the peace. Uh, priest. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, yeah, well, maybe. Because I have a funny feeling if I do win the lottery, I will probably become a supervillain. Yeah, I, I've always said if I won the lottery, I'd, I'd become an uber arsehole. Like, just <laughs> not an arsehole that drives people around for money. I I'd say, become more is that of, the a, new, more is that of the an new, arsehole. <laughs> is that the new offshoot of uh, the company? <laughs> yeah, you got Uber Eats. <laughs> uber drivers and uber assholes uber assholes yeah. <laughs> it's just, just me up to turn up and fucking just be awful to you for like 20 minutes yeah or you and i charge hire... you for it as well <laughs> or i could hire you out for exact for example if there was someone i didn't like yeah i could hire you out to follow them around and just be an asshole to them all day brilliant what a great plan is this uber if you asshole. win the lottery or if i win the lottery i can't remember now either way it's gonna happen if either of us win yeah, the lottery i suppose if I win the lottery, I'll help you set up that company. Right, brilliant. Yeah. I like it. I could do that. The thing is, I do that for free now, so... Yeah, it's nice to be paid for the things you love, though, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. But what if the arsehole you hired me to follow was me? 
Oh, there's some sort of meta shit going on there. Yeah, part of the metaverse. I could be part of the met. I'll give you the meta metaverse <laughs> uber arsehole. Yeah, yeah, speaking about arseholes. Yeah, exactly. And we can um, make an NFT out of it. Hey, I tell you what. I know we we don't. I, well, speak for myself. I don't quite understand what that is. No, but I not know, a clue. I know people make money off it, and I feel like I should know what it is because I feel like people are just throwing money at stupid stuff, and we need to get in on that. Yeah, I, you'd like to be part of that stupid stuff. I'd, like, I'd like to get paid for stupid stuff. Absolutely. Shall I try and find out what an NFT is? What the fuck is an NFT? What the fuck? Let, let me just do a Google search. What I thought it was like National Foundation Trust, like a like a, a wildlife charity. NFT. Right, let's see what results come up for that. Is it, isn't it like digital pictures? Eh, uh, this is good a thing as anyway. NFTs are kind of like that, but completely digitized. Oh no, I'm I'm reading half a sentence here. That's no good. Uh, what does NFT mean? NFT stands for non fungible token. Right. So fungible means it doesn't really exist. Which basically so people means people are paying for stuff that doesn't exist. Yeah, which basically means that it's a one of a kind digital asset that belongs to you and only you. The most popular NFTs right now include artwork, music, but also can include videos and even tweets. So, okay, I make a picture, a digital picture, a piece of yeah. art. And I sell you the rights to it. Right, so it's kind of like... It belongs so to you. So you have sole ownership of it. Yes, but you can't stop people stealing it. Because it's just a picture. What's the point? It. The point is, the people who've got there first have made some fucking money. And the rest right, of us so are sat here scratching our heads going, what the fuck? So is there a how how do they do this? How do they like? I don't know. Is there a, a website where they all are and people just select them? Do you upload your pictures on there? Like, I, th I think how as, does it work? I think as an individual artist, you can sell it and go. This is an NFT. Give me some money. Here's the digital rights to this. But where where are the rights? Do you have it, to patent it? I, I don't know. <laughs> well i tell you what bambi i want you to work it out because we need to get involved in this we do this, this episode sound... right so here this episode we're gonna sell this nah. as an nft well we could do but then i can't put it on the pod feed you can because oh i don't know can someone no, help you us? can't you can't can you so we could make exclusive comic content no that's that i don't no because all right, no, because I don't know. <laughs> All right, well, ah, fuck it. We're not going to spend an hour contemplating at what this is. We'll try and figure it out, Bambi, and hopefully we'll make some money. I trust you because you're the digital person, so if you don't know, then I'm fucked. Um, <laughs> I'm not... I am real. I know we oh, haven't I... actually seen each other in a while. I am real. I'm not just digital. Digital... <laughs> digital Bambi. <laughs> <laughs> digital artist formerly known as. Ah, the digital artist. Uh, what have you been doing? What have you been up well, to? Well, I counted uh, the 78 days since we last recorded, which mm. I already worked out. I broke yeah. a tooth. Oh, yes. Yeah. I'd done Christmas. I'd done New Year. Uh, done some work. Yeah. Paid £180 to get a tooth out. £180 fucking pound. Weren't, weren't you in pain after it as well? So you're yeah, like, yeah. pain. Pain for pain. Pain for pain. I've been like sterilised. Been sterilised. I've uh, yeah. been back to the dentist uh, because uh, the tooth hole got infected. Oh, darling, I'm having chest pains. Here at Bobo's Diner and Soft Play, for a limited time only, if you can eat your way out of a blue whale's heart, then you can win a holiday to the Democratic Republic of Congo for you and a friend of similar weight. Oh, I think I'm having a heart attack. <coughs> Bobo's Diner and Soft Play. Call an ambulance, I need to get to Bobo's. You know where it is, you big, fat, bloody thing, you... Sterilization is uh, is an interesting thing. Getting the sniff. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, that was fun. So I'll, I'll I'll take you through it. So for anyone who's thinking Please again, do. <laughs> if anyone who's thinking again, it's done. It's not as horrific as you you think, but it's also no fucking fun. Yeah. I was basically in a room with three strangers. I don't know why they needed three. One of them actually was there just to talk at me. 
and keep me talking as the operation goes on. The other one was there making notes. I don't know if they're making some kind of list of sizes. Uh, and the other guy was doing the actual operation, uh, listening to classical music like some kind of villain from a oh, movie that's, about to that's, murder people. That's creepy. Uh, but yeah, it was a, it, an interesting... I won't go into detail, but it was... Yeah, it's done now. But I still walk a bit like John Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I've been up to. Oh, I would have been freaked out by that music. That is, that's a super villain in in itself. It Wonder is. if he won the lottery. He might have done. He may, I might have even been qualified. <laughs> yeah, he just, he just like, won the lottery I, and said, "Can I have a go?" That's I just want to. I just want to snip people. Yeah, that's why there's three of them in the room. Only two of them needed to be there. He was the bonus guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can I have a go? On the next yeah, one. Yeah, why not? I know. Oh well, it sounds like you've been through the ringer. If I'm, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's uh, yeah. Is what it is. It's the choices we make to live <laughs> the lives. Happy New Year. Happy you got New Year. Any... New Year, new, new me. <laughs> new Year, new me in pain. <laughs> um, have you got any New Year's resolutions? I I very rarely make them um, because I am old enough to re- to realise that it's all bollocks, isn't it? Really, mm. because we are who we are, and if we want to change, New Year doesn't need to be the time to do it. Um, and I'm so old <laughs> that change is uh, is irrelevant. Like it doesn't matter. What's, what's the point? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so no All is right. the answer. I haven't All made right. resolutions right. in a long time. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know where to go with that. Should we do some news? <laughs> Let's do some news. I mean, have you got plenty of news? I've got three. That's good. I've got three. You go first. Headlines first. Okay. Number 10 to host Creamfields in 2022. (laughs) Uh, Police ditch crime for Pokemon Go and King John Un. uh, No, Kim John Il invents the burrito. Oh, brilliant. Okay. Boris buys big boat. (laughs) Object (laughs) as big as France spotted from space. Peppa Pig to get vegan remake. nice okay <laughs> uh so i uh, can't wait for that so yeah so obviously it's come out in the news about all the parties at number 10 yeah, like, yeah. last night um and also i think you saw um on facebook there was an event created for number 10 to host the new year's party which uh thousands of people um attended um across <laughs> the country and now um obviously prime location to host the top top festival creamfields which is full-on party music music i actually quite like dance music but Brilliant. basically um because of they are the party central of the uk now it would only be fitting that they host creamfields amazing i cannot wait get my ticket ready get my glow sticks <laughs> get my rave on yeah. <laughs> i hope bounce boris with johnson boris. yeah bouncing boris does a bit of uh mc in bit of a dj set yeah (laughs) can't wait can't wait for that uh please stitch crime for pokemon go so this is a story of how um two los angeles police officers were fired for chasing pokemon (laughs) rather than (laughs) chasing after robbers right okay Uh, so you've got to catch them all haven't you you've got to catch them all the the pokemon not the robbers well there isn't an app for the thieves is there no. Um, so yeah, <laughs> apparently they were trying to pursue a Snorlax um, when they witnessed um, someone doing a crime, and um, they ignored it so they could get their Snorlax. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> and they got fired. Um, well, did they get the Snorlax though? Apparently, yeah, I think so. It took them twenty minutes though um, to catch the Snorlax. So it must have been a must have been a big old Snorlax. A, a tricksy bastard, eh? Yeah. So, and then my last story is North Korea claims Kim Jong Il invented the burrito. This is this is. I've seen this one today, actually. This yeah. is true. Um. So yeah. Um. North Korea ha- is claiming that Kim Jong Un created the burrito. So um. Oh no! Sorry, it was created by Kim Jong Un. Well, I know it wasn't, but they, they're claiming it was Kim Jong Un, who obviously died in. 
Right, whoever's alive now. Yeah, I think Ill I think Ill was the last dead one. I think Un is the current one. Right. So Un Perhaps. is claiming Ill. <laughs> <laughs> dead Ill. Dead Ill. Who cr- created his dad created the burrito. Yeah, yeah. So obviously um we know what's going on in North Korea. It's very sheltered from the rest of the world. They've not long brought in the burrito as a, a food item into the country. Um, and they're just, yeah, it's taking claim that he created it. Um, yeah, which is mental, isn't it? It is. It, it's, it, um, it's Mexican food. Um, but no, it was created by Kim John Il. So, yeah. Um, apparently, he's also claimed in the past that Kim invented the hamburger as well so okay which is weird because i'm pretty sure in the last olympics he also won all the medals yes he partake and won everything yeah he won everything and also in the world cup yeah he scored um, all the goals he scored all the goals it's very good he actually edited edited um old footage from like black and white footage from games in like the 60s and edited it with footage from the new games to make it look like it's weird it's so well, bizarre you've got to give them credit for having such a good editing team behind them yeah but i'd love to see the footage because i guarantee you the footage is not great <laughs> yeah um and i'm wondering is it a case of the people are gullible because they have lived a sheltered life or are they fully aware of the ludicrousy of it they're just obviously scared for their lives to say anything i suspect it. it's uh more of the latter i think they're, they're probably quite scared um because yeah. information and and whatever you just find a way of getting places so even mm. if there are restrictions I, i'm sure there are they are they are aware but then there will be some people that might actually genuinely buy into to what might be a bit a bit of both right yeah they, they might do and some people might truly believe it's the right way to to run a country which is madness it is madness but if you look at our country from the outside we're absolutely bonkers okay fair point <laughs> well i think <laughs> everyone everyone's a bit bonkers but yeah right. no, I'm, I'm so not... are you saying you're advocating for dictatorship in this country uh, yeah maybe <laughs> It's got to be the right person. Yeah, it's got to be a nice person. As long person, as it's charismatic. Really. I mean, if it's if... someone like Danny Dyer, I'd be up for that. Do you reckon? I'm yeah. thinking more Danny DeVito as my, my cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be happy as long as they're called Danny. Danny, yeah. Uh, M- Danny. Minog. Minog. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely happy. Um, and if they can invent food like the burrito, even better. <laughs> oh, cool. Well, thank right, you for your uh, You're welcome. You are most welcome. So, Boris buys a big boat. Boris Johnson, England Prime Minister, and reject fetish doll has ordered a big boat so we can sail away and leave the country to sink. True. Uh, object as big as France was spotted from space. Scientists got all in a panic when they spotted an object as big as France from space. It turns out it was just France. They were looking down. <laughs> they weren't looking out. They were just looking back back at Earth. I knew, I knew that was the punchline. I knew it was coming, but it still made me laugh. <laughs> Fucking idiot scientists. <laughs> so yeah, Peppa Pig to get a vegan remake. Popular kids TV show Peppa Pig to get a vegan vegan remake featuring characters such as Peppa Pepper, Daddy Pepper, <laughs> Mummy Pepper, Granddad Pepper, Granny Smith, Candy Stick, and Miss Rampant Rabbit. Lawrence Fishburne, who is a long term advocate for veg, is believed to be the voice of Granddad Pepper. <laughs> so that's happening. <laughs> Oh, you had me at Pepper Pepper. <laughs> um, that's great. That's great. Would you um, watch it? Yeah. Oh, what's going on with my laptop? It's gone mental. Uh, yeah, I would watch it. And yeah, the best thing sounds, is, watching it is fantastic. one of your five a day as well. <laughs> is it? <laughs> it's, it's healthy. What if you watch five episodes? Are you just full You're sorted. Healthy? Absolutely sorted. You're sorted? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can eat bacon. Uh, for the rest of your life. <laughs> one one that, episode of Pepper That's my diet. Pepper. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. That's fantastic. So that uh, was any of news. yours true? Uh no. <laughs> oh, right. Uh I think one of yours was true, was it? Two of them. Oh, so the Korea one was true. Give me the other two again. Uh number ten to host Creamfields. Oh, that wasn't the true one, okay. Uh, uh I the wish police it was. stitched crime for Pokemon Go was true. Amazing. What a absolute pair of Legend. Pair, pair of legends. <laughs> cool. Uh do you have any dislikes or likes of the week, Bam? I do. So, I dislike 
my own pedanticness, pedan- pedantism, as you would. Uh, so earlier today, the missus, she was in her workroom, not like a workroom where I put her to work, to a workroom that's separate from the rest of the house. Uh, she asked me for some skittles. So I walked off, and as I'm walking off, to myself, I'm having an argument, saying, what is some skittles? Like, mm. my sum and your sum and the missus sum are all different. Why can't she be more precise? What is some? If I bring her some and she doesn't like that many or there isn't enough, then I've got it wrong. And I got really annoyed at myself. And I was like, I thought about it. And I was like, yeah, but if she said, get me 12 Skittles, I'd be fucking well pissed off if I had to sit there and count out 12 Skittles. So I, I my dislike is my own pedanticness. But I have learned over the years to just argue it out with myself rather than with the person that it's... Yeah. Um, yeah. It is do, you, about... do you often argue with yourself about this? Yeah, it's all internally. Uh, I, I'm not completely uh, outspokenly... Um, yeah, I don't argue outwardly. It's all internal. Do you ever argue back? Well, that's what an argument is. See, I've just been pedantic about that. You yeah, are. That was very yeah. pedantic. Yeah. Do you know what? Let's have it out. <laughs> <laughs> I already have. I've already sorted it in my own head. And <laughs> well, I was right. Good. Maybe that's your superpower. What? Mr. Pedantic. Talking yourself out of it. Oh, okay. But that's took years and years of being a pedantic twat. Well, you know, didn't build Rome in a day. Pedantic practice makes pedantic perfect. That's hey. going on my gravestone. That's that's on your gravestone. I like how you remember my catchphrase more than me. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that, that's my dislike. But when okay. I, after having this argument with myself, I, I'm sure we've discussed this on the show before. Yeah. Um, but when you imagine something, mm. can you your so your internal monologue, your imagination, is it all internal? No. Or is it words, or is it visuals? Ooh, per- personally, yeah. Um, both, I think. Okay, okay. I can do both. I, I'm quite good at daydreaming and stuff. And then I do some, and I can do do it with thoughts as well. Yeah. But I, I, I think I've said this before. Um, I'm really bad for talking to myself. Like, really okay. bad. Like, if someone saw me, like, they would think, Jesus, yeah, he's got it bad. Um, especially, like, there's times where when I was smoking and I used to go outside smoking, I'd just be there talking to myself. Is that because and some, smoking is so uncool now? There's no one there to, sp- yeah, to just talk so to? Yeah, lonely. Oh. So but sometimes I just get so um well it's a bit of a bit of a counselling session this. Um I get so engrossed in my own daydreaming mm. sometimes. And then also I can um it can just be like fo- general thoughts about anything or anything, but then I could like you know, like wishful thinking as well, you know, like dreaming dreaming dreaming, like yeah. what wanting things and doing little scenes like playing little scenes out and stuff yeah, yeah. I, honestly man i'm nuts <laughs> not really i mean apologies if we have talked this exact subject before because i'm on on the show i'm not quite sure if we have we've both but, got bad memories oh yeah this is a this is a problem but i i i visualize entirely so i will if i'm thinking of something i can be sat there and you know when you're staring in space i mm. actually physically see what i'm thinking of yes sir. and it blocks and off the rest of my vision and you completely just like well, your vision's there, but you're just not paying yeah. attention no, no, to no. it. Yeah, because your your imagination, mind eye, or whatever, has took and you're over. You just completely transfixed. It's so weird. But I, I learned um, people who primarily see in visuals. Now, when you see something, do you see it in as a flat two D thing, or can you imagine a three D object? Ooh, I think three D. I think it, it is three D. Okay. So I learned something via the missus showing me something from TikTok. That is a dyslexic thing. More people with dyslexia have this kind of visualization, whereas people without will uh, see more often than not words, and some people see nothing. See, I'm not dyslexic, though. Ah. Uh, <laughs> maybe take a test. No, you, you're not, but obviously it's primarily more people that way. It see, might be I- a creative thing. As much it, as I, th- I think it's a creative thing. I definitely yeah. think it's a creative thing. Um, because I think more, 
Have you spoke to anyone who you definitely know is not creative and spoke to about it? So there's a friend of mine who can not visualize anything. Are they not creative person? They are not in the same way me and you are, mm. but they are good at things like uh, photoshopping pictures and stuff like that. Okay, so more technical. Yeah, maybe that's maybe that's it. But yeah, creativity is quite a wide range. So I'd say him being able to do that is, is creative. But yeah, I don't think I would he would agree. sit here and come up with this kind of nonsense. No. But he so if he's going on a car journey, mm. he has to use his sat nav because he can't visualize his journey. Huh. Even if he's done it before. Uh, he, he can't he can't do it see i think i'd be a good driver me because if i walk somewhere once i remember it the next time yeah I, yeah I'm, I'm kind of the same but there are some places that are a block like i just won't accept it in my memory because i don't know why there's only so much room in there i guess yeah and it's not mm. a lot i'm at a full capacity right now no more memories. No more, me. please. Thank you very much. <laughs> Too much shit is in here. If I didn't already. know you before this moment, I'm not interested. I'm the same with that, but like, it's not memory. I just don't want any more friends. Like, I've so, got enough. <laughs> do you ever do that? So, if you start a new job or oh, anything, yeah. like you're like, right, fuck this. I'm here to work. None of my, none of these people are my <sighs> friends. Day I've two, got... you're at the at the house, getting pissed. Yeah. And oh yeah. Waking up next to the dog. I, I did the exact same thing. Uh, I had an audition today, and I met a lot of people. And I'm like, well, I know I know a couple of people there. I'll just talk to them. And I was like, I had every intention to be like, no, I, I don't want to come across as a dickhead when I say this, but I just, you know, I, I find it difficult to keep on track with the friends that I have already. <laughs> so to, like, meet new people, and then you never know. You might meet, out of all them people, you might find one that you have a, you connect well with and you want to keep in contact and you're like well that's another person i have to message <laughs> can i say collectively uh, from all of your friends just don't it's all right <laughs> well I, I i pride myself thinking i am quite good at keeping up yeah. on like messaging people i've got friends who aren't as good as that oh yes you know yeah um you know or don't make as much of it and that's fine you know I'm not going to hold that against people, but... But I they're out of your life now. Yeah, they're dead now. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I just... I had that intention, and I ended up talking to loads of people, and, it, you know, I probably will make friends. I just can't help myself, but... Yeah. Yeah, it's a weird thing, isn't it? Like, no, nope, not doing it. Some not people are really it. good at it, at, at just switching off entirely. Mm. But, I, I, yeah, I'm not one of them, as much as... I also... I want I'm to generally not. think... I'm wondering if it's a face or just an aura about me i have one like because i'm i'm single like i have been for a while and so a lot of times i am on my own um and i always get people talking to me all the time like no matter where i am whether i'm in a, on a bus or a train or in a shop on airplanes people always bloody talk to me especially and even at times when i've got my headphones in music and still people i don't i don't know what it is because i don't think i'm as friendly as they think i am well there's an app out there called find morgan friends i should have maybe <laughs> told you about it i uh, i set it up <laughs> with uh old um presenter of this show uh dylan cromwell and it's just do you know like when a, it's more so in america when a kid goes missing or something you get is it the amber alert and yeah. a, an alert goes out so what happens when yeah uh, when you're in proximity of people an alert goes out with your backstory and your picture mm. and a little it's all told over a lovely little film makes with sense. some nice soundtrack and it just makes you proper pitiful and uh, <laughs> people just want to help sorry yeah. yeah it's more of a pity thing right yeah I get it. yeah 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 well, do you want me to turn that sense. off or are you happy with it? um yeah please <laughs> no i'm gonna up it i'm gonna up it <laughs> if anyone is listening and think i'm unapproachable and and would like to say hello. No, I am an approachable person. Like, please do say hello. But I just sometimes... I, I think I'd struggle if I was famous. Oh, yeah. I think yeah. I'd struggle. Again, because as much as, like, I'm comfortable with my friends and stuff, I am also quite shy as well. Yeah. That's a performer thing, isn't it, apparently? Yeah. And sometimes I'm like... Mm -hmm. And so I think I'd struggle with him, like people just coming up to you all the time. And you have to be polite because yeah. it's just obviously 
it's just politeness, isn't it? You should be polite. There comes but, a point though when you've you've had enough. I, w- I worked like I'd Comic Con conventions for years with the misses and the customers are always right and mm. you just find at one point you're just like the fucking not like no, and I'm not going to talked about this in the yeah, customer service thing before. I'm not going to stand it. When I was working for companies where I'm a representative of the company, you've got less choice. When you work for yourself, it's like every now and then it's okay to stand your ground. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, like that it. was my dislike, my pedanticness. <laughs> I forgot that was the dislike of the week. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I'll, it, I'll throw it in there. I like custard creams. Yeah. So I cut out uh, tea years ago because I'd, I'd quite often have a cup of tea and a packet of biscuits. A packet? A packet. Hmm. Quite a large packet. And that's why I cut out tea. But more recently, actually since I had the tooth out, I was like, oh, do you know what? I want something soft. So I made a cup of tea and had some dunked biscuits. Ah. Uh, I'm like that, but with multi bags of crisps. <laughs> like wow, you dunk them bag. in your tea? That's awful. Uh, yeah, with still in the packet as well. <laughs> <laughs> Just softens up the bag. Yeah, makes it easier. So I like custard creams. I dislike pedanticness, pedant- okay. pedantism. Dislike right. being pedantic. What about um, you? Any likes, dislikes? Uh, well, I've, I've got two then, if we're doing two out Ooh, there. You can uh, have two. The dislike is auditions. I hate auditions. I had an audition today. Hate them. Um, I'd rather stand out there and perform in front of 300 people uh, in a full show and be absolutely fine. But when I'm standing in front of a panel of like five people and got to audition, I'm just a, a nervous wreck. Absolute bag of nerves. So did they give, for today's audition, was it a pre-prepared piece by them? Yeah, it was right. like part of the script that I had to learn, yeah. But I was auditioning for two separate parts, so I had to learn two parts. The front and the back of the donkey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I had like dialogue for both parts and a song for both parts as well. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, but, I, but it was like, I, I, I think I did it well, and like I did the song and the, uh, the acting and everything well, but as with, it's always evident when I'm nervous because my, my arm was just like full on well just shake your arm just shake your arm shake your arm yeah wow yes so um hopefully that doesn't go against me but we'll see i, I am actually expecting a call at some point yes and we've, we've already discussed this if you do get a call mm. you're going to answer it on speakerphone so i might answer it on the show yeah we might not you... put it in because it there might be some confidentiality shit going on but we'll see how this goes <laughs> we'll see how it that goes. would be quite funny also I might be very disheartened for the rest of the show. <laughs> yeah. So what should we, that's the next section. I've got more dislikes. Uh, Here's that audition again. <laughs> that director's a bitch. Um, oh, now we can't put it on. Uh, said that. <laughs> she's, she's not. She's actually a lovely woman. It was just a joke in the context of what we were saying. Uh, my like of the week is, I, I don't know if you, you won't have seen it yet, um, because it's not actually out here yet, but I've watched it. Um, Peacemaker, the new... DC show uh, with oh, John Cena. However, have you watched it then? If it's not, um, what's the legal thing? Is it VPN? I'll say that. Yeah, or like um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Is it any good? It. Yes. Oh, you said Fan- it, was, it was your like, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes, fantastic, fantastic. It's by James Gunn, the guy who did the Suicide Squad films and also did Guardians of the Galaxy. The Marvel. Suicide Squad, not Suicide Squad. Yeah, the, the more successful one of the two Suicide Squads. With with uh, John Cena in it, so yeah. it's obviously it's a spin-off from that, um, and it's it's very very funny, but also just just cool. It's it's a typical if you've watched a lot of James Gunn stuff um, over the years. It's Got his humour. It's his style of humour, and it's obviously his style of storytelling as well, but in a in a s- series format, and it's um, yeah, it's brilliant. I highly recommend if you can watch it, go and watch it. There's so four... is it f- five thumbs up from Morgan? Five thumbs up Morgan, yeah. <laughs> Five thumbs up Morgan, which is our next section where we'll <laughs> where we get five randoms with varying size of thumbs and one at a time. So depending on how I how much I like the project we're talking about, it's yeah. Dip- so if anything, I should start rating them like lower down the card. But I don't. I'm very honest with my reviews. So <laughs> it, every time, like, oh no, it's not. Oh, it's another five. It's a five thumber again. Oh, it's hurting now. Oh. Stop making good content. Right. Okay. Well, do you want to do it out of ten then? <laughs> no, five's no? enough. <laughs> okay, okay. Or maybe tens of fist. Um, 
Yeah. Well, that's 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 five digits at once, isn't it? Yeah. But yeah. times two for the force. I'm getting lost now. <laughs> I'm the type of guy that likes to drink a nice cup of joe in the morning. What better way to drink my coffee than carbonated? That's why I drink new Cafizzo. What better way to begin your day than with a nice cup of Cafizzo? Morgan has questions. And the so artist yeah. formerly known as Might Have Answers. Cool. So these are just some questions. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I think we got it from the uh, the name of the section. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, what is the best slash slash worst practical joke that has ever been played on you? On me, oh. or if not necessarily on you, that you've heard someone else do to someone else? That can be fine. I mean, the practical jokes that involve you truly thinking someone is hurt. I don't find funny. No, I just well, can't no, do it. Without people getting harmed, just like Yeah, no, funny. no, people aren't harmed, but that's that's the problem. It's when someone's pretending to be hurt. I don't find that funny. Oh, um, yeah. Only because I can't handle <laughs> that situation. Yeah, um, don't want to be put in that situation. No, because... do you? Does that mean if someone is hurt, you walk away? I think so. <laughs> cool. Remind me uh, no, no, this is, this is the problem. I'd, I'd, I'd want to try and deal with the situation. And if it turns oh. out it was just a joke, I'd be fucking furious. And ah. I'd want to hurt them to the extent that they pretended to be hurt in the but first place. But then if place. you hurt them, would you help them afterwards? Yeah, because I'd feel guilty. <laughs> <laughs> it's just an endless loop of you I, hurting I and really helping. can't think of a particular practical joke that's been played on me. And that's really boring. I, I remember oh, one, okay. at, one at school in RE class, like religious, religious education, education class. Yes. And um, it was, I don't know what they were trying to teach us. But it was something like, it was a trust thing. Mm. And all I learned is don't fucking trust the teacher. Um, and it, it's not going where you think it would. It was just a little trust game. So you'd be sat down on a chair and you'd have to stand up when you were told to stand up and sit down when you were told to sit down. It's quite simple. And they put a wet sponge on the chair when you stood up and you just sat on this wet sponge. So for the rest of the, that lesson, I had a wet ass. <laughs> like, what was that trying to teach me apart from don't trust the fucking teacher? I don't, I don't get it. I still, to this day, I'm a bit baffled by that. But I'm sure there's been ass. worse. There's been worse done to me, but I can't I can't recall off the top of well, my head. That's a good answer. What about you? Answer. What about yourself? Um, okay, so this is quite a cruel one. So, so yeah, the worst practical joke. Ooh, um, I thought of another one that happened to someone else. I'll tell you about it when you've done yours. Okay, all right. So um, when I was younger, um, my sisters told me that I was adopted <laughs> um, and that, basically this was a very young age and that i was basically an alien and that one day they they were gonna come down for me and pick me back up uh, they kept that going for years to the point where i was petrified and genuinely believed that i was from another world <laughs> well that's that's commitment if it's going they, that they long they kept that going for years i was from like a, you're talking like from like two to like at least eight and you're still waiting yeah well, yeah, I, I, at this point, I presume it was a joke. <laughs> yeah, well, this is it. What if it wasn't? What if I've never, just, clar what if I've never got clarified, a bit delayed? actually. Got a bit delayed, like yeah, they took a left turn happened. at the sun. <laughs> <laughs> so I've, got, I've, I've just remembered two that have happened to other people. So one was to um, uh, Godzuki reference, mm. uh, his brother. Um, have we give him silly names, Steve? It's a silly name, isn't it? So Steve, Steve um, Pollard. If you if you knew who he was, he's a silly. silly he's a silly brother. man. So he ran into uh, his brothers. Well, they shared a bedroom. So he ran back mm. into the bedroom one day and was like, "Come on, get up. Let's get our presents open. It's Christmas. Yeah, yeah." And uh, Gozuki was dead excited. Got up, ran downstairs. It's in the middle of July. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, that's a good. One. So another one that happened uh, is to my missus when she was younger. Um, her best mate was going on holiday to like Disneyland right. and her brother found out about it so he wrote a letter to my missus from her best mate saying I'm allowed to take someone with me you can come <gasps> to Disneyland with me <laughs> so she got dead excited and what have you and was getting ready and everything so excited and then he just told her that it wasn't real 
How awful is that? That's that. That's the worst practical joke ever. Is that because Especially... it involves fantasy like Disney, where someone yeah, would love to and go? It, yeah. Did you know if it was a normal holiday, like? Um, Obviously, you'd be disappointed anyway, but with it Disney, I think it's especially for youngins. It's got such a, it's got like a, such a special magic behind it that would be like, oh, did did she ever get to go? Has she ever been? No. Well, as I'm telling that story, I've just realised it's probably something I should help her with at some point. Yeah, maybe you should take her. Yeah. Problem which, is, what, I hate which that one was fucking it? mouse. Uh, at the time, I think it might have just been the early days of Paris. Paris. We'll take take it to Paris. Yeah, I mean that's a bit cheaper, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bit cheaper than. <laughs> it's gonna cost me a lot less. It's not it? like she's gonna listen to this and find out. Is no, it? could I get there on easy jet? Do you reckon? Yeah. Well, actually, you could take a boat. Get a coach, couldn't I? <laughs> oh, get a coach. Yeah. It'll yeah. Take, yeah. Go a mega two smelly day, bus. A two-day bus trip there. One, one day, day there. Disney. <laughs> And then a two-day trip the, back, but tell her you're going away for five days. Brilliant. The problem with that though is I'd have to go on that journey. Yeah, so but I'll send funny. her on the bus. I'll, yeah, I'll splash fly. a first-class ticket. I'll get Crazy. stuff ready for her. Yeah. Have an and eight you've out got four time. days in the park. Yeah, she's got a lot of catch up when she gets there. Yeah, I'll, I'm not going to go there. I, I'm just going to let her in, and I'm going to go out and see the uh, the naughty dancers of Paris. <laughs> The Moonland Rules. The Moonland Rules. Because um, I can, can, can. You can, 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 and I'd love to join, join, join. <laughs> right, so me and you are going to go on holiday. Right, mm. we'll let the missus know. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Um, Any more if questions? You, if you could meet one celebrity, who would it be? Right, okay. It's already been mentioned, and it would be Danny DeVito. Oh, good choice, yeah. Uh, he's been around for a long time. He's met people... I mean, he's a legend in his own in his own he right. He is a legend, obviously. In his own right, yeah. But he has met other legends. Like so you he... think he'd have a lot of well, he cool met Andy stories. Kaufman. Yeah. Uh, he's met everyone. Um, yeah, he's met Batman. <laughs> he's met Arnie. Charlie he was also Kane. in Batman. He's met yeah, he's met lots of people. And more recently, he was in a doing a show called Always Sunny in Philadelphia, which is legendary one, in its own right. One of my favourite comedy shows. It's up there with Curb Your Enthusiasm for me. I could never get into Curb. <gasps> I know. Surprised by that. I know. Surprised by that. I just didn't, give it, a, I didn't give it the chance, to be fair. But yeah, Danny DeVito, I think. Yeah, good shout. I'd say Jim Carrey. Okay, okay. yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, obviously a childhood hero. If, it, if you were just choosing one and he was still alive, it would have been Robin. Uh, Williams, obviously. All right, okay. I was thinking of um, Batman and Robin, like yeah, the the fourth shitty film, yeah, him. Some <laughs> <laughs> O'Donnell, Chris O'Donnell, was it? Or something? I, I wish it was Chris O'Donnell. That'd be hilarious. I think he's an Irish comedian. <laughs> Danny Dan or oh, do, something O'Donnell. Oh, let's let's have a look. Who played Robin in Batman and Robin? Uh... With Mister Freeze. Eyes to meet you. <laughs> Perfect for Arnie. He had a crash the other day. He did. Do you know what, right? Uh, my auntie took me to see Batman and Robin uh, after the death of someone in my family to cheer me up. And if anything, it made me feel worse. Oh, who did you say his name was? Chris, Chris O'Donnell. O'Donnell. Yeah, you were absolutely right. What um, an absolute... Pulled that out of the brain. I was nowhere. <laughs> yeah. I mean, who am I? I'm thinking of someone else with an O'Donnell name, an Irish yeah. comedian. So yeah, that's Maybe a good answer. Do. I like that. Yeah, it would it would have been Robin Williams. Um, just from the childhood. Uh, yeah. Them two, them two were very much like my idols when I was a kid. I, Maybe I, Bob Mortimer as well. I love I love a bit of Bob. The thing with Bob Mortimer is, I think we all feel like we know him. Yeah. Because he's got that local accent. He's just a daft lad. Well, he's always here. As well. he's always at the pub at the Borough match and stuff. So he's yeah. About. It's one of those things that isn't out of the. The realms of reality, isn't um, it, to um, meet him? Out of, yeah. And also, he, he's one of the funniest comedians that Britain have ever produced. Yep. Very, very much so. Um, what mythical creature do you wish existed? So, it's not a unicorn, not a dragon. I would like... I, I've not heard of it yet, but I'm going to make one up on the spot. Oh. Some kind of multi-meat beast... It's always with meat with you. But we it's don't have meat to mentioned in We don't show. have to slaughter it. We don't have to we kill it. We might have it. to call this the meat hour. <laughs> no. All we have to do, it lays meat eggs. 
<laughs> so I think it's going to be a mix. It, it looks like a cow for the most part, but right. but it has it lays meat eggs and dispenses um, different flavor milkshakes from different teats. <laughs> That's what I want. What's it called? Um, the Mutacular Beast. Mutacular. Yeah. Like Mutacular that. Beast. That's what I want. Um, well, you've put me down meat a little bit. I was going to say a dragon, but sorry. Sorry, dragons are too realistic for you. <laughs> I reckon science could make a Mutacular Beast. I don't think it could make a dragon. I th- of course it can. I think uh, Jurassic Park could easily be done. So Jurassic Park is based on real creatures that they could still find the DNA for. I think making a dragon in the sense of a fantasy film would be pretty tricky. The fire breathing thing is the bit that gets me. Well, maybe just someone has to like light it, <laughs> light it. Well, they did it in God, the Godzilla movies. Don't this like I think it's two chemicals that mix, and that can be something that happens. You can mix two chemicals to create fire. Nothing is impossible. Right, let's get on it. I'll make the mutacular beast. Impossible. You make a dragon. Let's get a race there. See who gets there first. To spell uh, impossible, you have to say I'm possible. What a wanker. <laughs> <laughs> but I've got that in big bold letters on my wall. And your ceiling first thing in the morning. I'm, I'm poss- possible. possible. Um, what is the most upsetting film you've ever seen? Oh... So, um, ah, so, as a kid, the films I got most upset at from mm. aren't the ones emotional upset. It was Raiders of the Lost Ark when the guy melts. Oh, so like not upsetting, yeah. but like freaked you out to the point where it upset me. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, okay. And it's a different stance on the question. But it I'll, is. I'll accept it. And. Um, Oh, another film called The Last Starfighter. A similar thing happens where someone's face gets melted. That was this figure. It's a face like that. melting. Yeah, it's awful. But actual cry upset. Um, you're not going to tell me you're a robot and you don't cry, are you? No, no. I I watched. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea. I recently watched another film. It's a series. Uh, Afterlife, the Ricky Gervais thing. Oh, beautiful! Yeah. And the last episode of season three. It yeah. was fucking hell. It when did was... you watch it? I watched it last Sunday. Yeah, probably about the same time. And it was like, and I there was one point I was bed. just like, oh my, I just said, no, no, you can't, you can't do that. Yeah, I agree. Obviously no spoilers in case people haven't yeah. watched it. Um, if you haven't, I highly recommend you do. But emotionally, that's the, the most upsetting thing I've seen in a long yeah, time. Yeah, I was, but I was still, I, I was recommend sobbing. it to everyone. Oh yeah, I was sobbing. I was, I was tears were rolling, physical tears. Um, I would go with. Oh, that's that's a good shout, actually. Um, in terms of what when I was a kid, what upset me, like freaked me out. Um, how you answered, I would go with um, Clash of the Titans. Okay. You know the original one with the, the kind of stop motion. Yeah, freaky monsters. As fuck, it, yeah. And the skeletons and stuff. I remember seeing that as like a maybe like three or four year old. Yeah. And freaking me the hell out like like i screamed um and the other thing was similar it was the original version of war of the worlds the black and white version oh yeah where the um like the tentacle is like the camera is zooming around the house i think they're in a basement it's zooming around they're hiding i remember seeing that for the first time and it fucked me up (laughs) yeah um and then also the it's a bit of a girly film. I was forced to watch it at the time. Whatever. It was all macho going, no, nah, I want to watch this shit. Uh, the Notebook. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, okay, I've not seen that. Is, oh, it, is it bad? The, en- the ending, yeah. It, it, it was because it was to do with old people and yeah. it wasn't that long after my grandparents, so yeah, it, it got me. But, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, What are you? last question. What are you interested in that most people aren't? Um... Something oh. niche that you like that uh, I'd say mud- 95 of the population would not be interested in. I probably my job, bizarrely, okay. like um, working with uh, lasers. I'm just interested in in how it all works, the mechanics of it. 
Just love lasers. Just fucking love lasers, me. Fucking fucking love pew, 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 pew. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'd take you for your birthday. Laser <laughs> quest. <laughs> no, it's just one of those things that um, it's not just a job. It's something I actually am interested in to the point I, I wouldn't That's... mind building my own machine and stuff like that. But Fra- most people couldn't Fire the shit. laser! You're going to become like Mr. Um, Dr. Bond buddy. Yeah, that's that's the ultimate... Um, Dr. Evil. ...aim is to just laser people <laughs> to bits. Fire the laser! <laughs> but yeah, so I'd say that doesn't interest most people. Although I think, actually, that might be wrong because that's people might find it interesting just what it is and what it does. Yeah. You say yeah, lasers, okay. and I suppose, yeah. But I think to the... It, it'd be a niche thing, though, that, and that's yeah, the point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, maybe for me, wrestling? Oh, okay. Is that a niche? Or is, I don't know if it's that's not... still... It's not popular anymore, though, is it? Is it not? Is it, is it gone no. out of popularity again? It's not as mainstream as it once. As it was, like, back when, in the 90s, where it was Austin and The Rock and stuff. I even, think... Even, like... Years ago, when John Cena was, it's not as big as it was then. I think with television the way it is, um, I don't think anything seems as popular because anything can be accessed at any point. So it's we don't accessible, and also there's too much content now. Um, yeah, but yeah, and that's it. There's so and... much out there. You don't, you don't, you don't really need to worry about it. Yeah. Uh, as in, so you don't have to spend the time to to sit in front of the TV at the same time. So you don't all have the same conversation the next day. Mm, mm. Like you, you would back when we were at school and stuff like that. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, okay, I'll just see if I can think of anything else. Um, no, I can't think. Astrology? Oh, okay. I'm quite into astrology. I'd like to go to... Um... Mars. Uh, there's a the Mars. There's an observatory tower in Wynyard, I think, and I'd like to go yeah, to that. Yeah. Um and I remember going to the planetarium in London, which is not there anymore. It's part of just Madame Two Swords now in London. Do they not uh, just put waxwork stars up? They should do. Just a black curtain well, with some wax strips. Yeah. Um and I remember loving that as a kid. And yeah, um and uh, one of the best nights i've ever had was when i was working in camp america uh in 2015 and we were out in connecticut which was it's all woodland beautiful yeah. place and on a night obviously you don't have the light pollution and it's the clearest i have ever seen the, the sky on a night and it, it was warm as well so we all just slept out on the field on the night and just literally just looking up at the stars and like i was blown away by it, it was nice like, it was proper mesmerising, magical. But I've never seen a sky like it before because there was literally nothing no light. else. Yeah. No I... light, no clouds, nothing. It was as if it was as if I was in space. Class. That's how clear it felt. I had a similar kind of view from where is it? The uh, Isle of Mull when I went there for mm. a for a wedding that was a wild camping wedding that was featured on Don't Tell the Bride. Oh, was and, it? Uh, yeah. Oh, I'll, that's Were you on telly? I was on telly. I've been on telly twice, mate. Were you on telly for uh, Don't Tell the Bride? I was, yeah. Uh, but the the view was amazing, uh, looking up the stars. But yeah, I'll, I'll tell you a quick thing about the Don't Tell the Bride. Um, okay. It was a disaster. I didn't know this. The lad it was featured was a guy I used to work for, a good friend of mine, but he was hard to work for, and the production company were proper pushing against and they were arseholes. The production all, company were arseholes. Yeah, they were absolute arseholes. Um, and I did some... Basically, every time they interviewed me, I... You wouldn't... The people, the person filming wouldn't notice when they're filming, but I gave sly looks to the camera so they couldn't use the footage. <laughs> what were you doing? Just looking at the camera. And, but they, they won't use that as footage. So I'd be like, because you'd have to look at the interview off to the side. Mm. And then every now and then when they weren't paying attention, I would just look at the camera and I knew that they couldn't use the footage. So I was filmed a lot, but I was featured for like a couple of seconds. It was great. Wow. Uh, because I didn't want, I was part of it to help my friend out, but I didn't but want to be part be. of it because it was a fucking disaster. Um, did the wedding go like silly then? Yeah. The, the, it's If anyone out there 
is thinking of getting involved in reality TV, just fucking don't. Because you don't have the freedom you think you do. It is. Are they literally pushing it? It is produced and it is put Did, in one way to make... Because the, if they had a perfect wedding, what's the point? It doesn't make yeah, it Yeah, of course, of course. Was the wedding official then? Yes, they no, yeah. to the point where the registrar, because in Scotland, the the people are the bit that matters, not the place. So you can get married anywhere in Scotland, whereas in here it has to be in a building, it has to be right. in certain places, uh, to the point where the film crew tried to get the registrar to redo a shot, and she went, no, this is an official wedding, not a fucking film. <laughs> she told them off, it was brilliant. Did um, Did they ever get remarried, like redo it? No, no, because it was all, it was proper. It was official. However, it oh, was right, such, no, it, but it was such a disaster. I've seen that show. Yeah, it was such a disaster. Um, they ended up getting some compensation off them um, to have the the better party that they want. However, it doesn't matter because it didn't work out with them too, and they're divorced now anyway. Oh, but I, I can't say I'm surprised when you do that. Did they, did she know that they were going on the show? Yeah, yeah, that she knows. That's all she can know that she's right. part of it because the film crew follow. Could she her. have been happy about... Was she happy that was the way... Not the at wedding? all. So that kind of set up the fall, I'd imagine. Yeah, it, it's a shame. Um, but, yeah. Did he pick daft ideas? He tried not to. Some of them, obviously, you have to, because you won't even get considered. And he tried, like, the bridesmaids' dresses, he tried to get nice things, and the production company, oh, no, you can't have that, you've got to have this, and it's something that the bridesmaids blatantly don't like. You can't have that wedding dress... You've got to get one that's too small Sounds for the bride. Awful. It is, mate. It's disgusting. Have you sub- have you got footage of that? I'll be able to find it. And the other thing I was ever on telly for was a, a series filmed in the late 1999, I think, called Crime Nature, Watch? Nature Boy. Nature and that was a BBC programme. And I filmed for eight hours. What, were you uh, an extra? Or? I was an extra for eight hours. And I, was, I appeared on screen for about four seconds in total. If you could find both bits of footage for me and please send it over. Or, or even put it on the, the, the Daft Hour page, that'd be fantastic. Oh, mate, you'll see me as a skinny little trav looking guy. Well, in that I one. can't wait. I can't wait. I didn't know that. I didn't know I'll that. tell you, I've... I'll tell the story of that, What ha- my filming um, moments of that in the next episode. Well, make sure you write that out. down because we'll forget. Yeah. <laughs> um, brilliant. Okay. Should we do the uh, socials? Yes, we shall. You can get us on such social media platforms as chuckingbiscuits.com. So you just pick up a pile of biscuits, crush them, throw them at us. Uh, whatever sticks, we will be appreciative of. <laughs> uh, and that's your message. <laughs> you can also find us at Twitter at Daft Hour, Facebook forward slash the Daft Hour, email the Daft Hour gmail dot com, YouTube the Daft Hour at Gmail. No, that's not YouTube oh. the Daft Hour at Gmail. Oh. YouTube the Daft Hour, um, and also you can find us on all podcast feeds where we are available, um, which you've already found us if you are listening. So yeah, uh, do we have a name of the show? I have made no notes. Neither have I. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this show. Let's shall try and be... think about. Let's try and remember. Like, I think we should call it Boris Buys a Big Boat. Boris Buys a Big Boat. No. Okay, or yeah. Peppa Pig to Get a Vegan Remake. No. Because that is a thing. Pepper, pep. <laughs> pepper, pepper. Oh, vegan. Pepper, pepper. 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 So All the right. name of the show is. Pepper, Pepper. <laughs> well, oh. I have been the artist formerly known as... And you have. And I'm Morgan Fantastic. <laughs> okay. Uh, stay daft, everybody. Yes. Bye-bye, 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 bye-bye. Hopefully we'll see you soon. Ah. In a month. Six months' time. <laughs>